Hey everyone, I'm Daniel from NetRace. Short disclaimer in the beginning, this should probably be among the lines. He's nuts because this summer I tried shifting my Docker Compose stack of Isinga to Kubernetes and heavily underestimated the efforts needed. Um, what is Isinga 2 for the folks of you who are not in the monitoring business with Isinga also all too much? Um, it's a monitoring suite. You can go from very simple setups on the left to very complicated ones on the right, spanning different sites, uh, public clouds, private clouds. All the nice kinds of stuff where um, the things that are fun in life lie. Um, so um, when I used to test, I started out with VMs when I was new to the job. I didn't know anything about automation back then. I very quickly moved to pre-configured vagrant boxes because VMs don't scale and then moved on further to Docker images which are provided by the Singer project themselves. Um, it looked something like this. I had a Docker Compose file which would spin up uh, a whole Isinga stack, so to say, with the web UI, the Isinga core backend, Isinga DB for data handling, all the databases needed with the migrations already done, a Redis cache. And then one day I noticed that my Docker desktop settings had those neat little check mark uh, run a Kubernetes cluster locally. Um, so I was like, let's try this. I was new to Kubernetes at the time. I had to tinker a lot with it anyways. Um, the Docker images were there, so why not push them onto Kubernetes, right? It had to work. Um, however, really soon I noticed it doesn't work, welcome to hell, <coughs> YAML, because um, you would need to write so many secrets, all the services for the different parts communicating with each other, volume claims, the workloads themselves. Um, it would have been actually harder to maintain this than the Docker Compose file after all. I needed another solution and came across Acorn, which is a tool bundling um, images and configuration into OCI compliant build artifacts so you can push them to arbitrary registries, pull them into your cluster and let uh, Acorn generate uh, Kubernetes compliant workloads in your cluster. Um, it looks like this, really easy, right? I break it down for you really fast. You have an Acorn CLI locally running, which communicates with an API server and a controller in the cluster. They are um, um, in charge of building your images, pushing them to registries, pulling them again, reconciling them so the actual workloads get spawned. Um, you can install it like this. I normally activate the automatic ingress creation feature and let's encrypt support so I can actually reach my endpoints via um, HTTPS if I run it in a proper um, cluster. It installs the API server and controller, runs some checks for the ingress and then we're done. So this is how AML, the Acorn configuration language could, looks like, uh, could look like. It is a bit like Docker Compose in my opinion. I would create or define six containers, a few secrets, a few volumes and I'm done, right? Let's deploy this and I'm done, I can go home. Ah, uh, not that easy. I needed quite some iterations to get Isinga to bootstrap properly on Kubernetes. I needed some iterations to find out that um, recent Redis versions don't take the passwords so well, so I had to find the right Redis version to go with my Isinga within Kubernetes. Um, but in the end, I actually made it work. So here you can see what Acorn um, provisions for me if I push that Acorn file to my cluster. All the deployments are handled, all the services are set up. Um, I get the secrets in a separate namespace, so they are not in the actual workload namespace, and I get the ingress created automatically for me. Um, summing it up, Acorn can be useful if you are a developer or like to s uh, tinker with stuff but don't actually are that comfortable with uh, Kubernetes YAML yet. Um, you can have one um, build artifact for all your um, production cycles and stages and it supports different profiles within your configuration. Um, what it still lacks is CRD support which is on the um, roadmap and a more flexible and extensible configuration possibility for things like um, resource requests, limits, scheduling, all that kind of stuff. Thank you very much. This was my very short ignite. Um, if you want to follow my experiment or have a look yourself, there are links to Docker Hub and GitHub. I think I need to open this repository, but however, shout out to Excalibur and Carbon for making my slides much more beautiful than I would have been able to do it myself. Don't forget, don't forget, don't forget.